I'm the House of Representatives in Texas. I'm a native Texan, and uh, my brother, my father, both grandfathers and grandfather are all pastors. And uh, I'm a lawyer and a politician. And so I think my mom like, cries herself to sleep every night. Like, where did I go wrong with that one? But, um, you know, it, it's an area of ministry that I feel called to. It's a different arena, but I really feel like the Lord has called me to it. So I always had a desire uh, to get into the political arena, which led me to law school. And I went to Liberty University in Lynchburg. And I uh, graduated from there and was fortunate enough to intern with uh, Matt Staver and Liberty Council, one of the uh, sponsors of this event. And then I started their Texas office right after I graduated in 2007. So from 2007 to 2012, I was able to go into courtrooms all across America and uh, fight for the sanctity of human life, traditional family, and religious liberties against the ACLU and others intent on stripping those away. So I love doing that to be, you know, be on the forefront of the, the cultural battle. And then uh, in 2008, uh, our president was elected, current president was elected. And if you remember, right before he took office, he said, we are a week away from fundamentally transforming America. And I don't know about you, I'm married, I've been married for 11 years, but if I looked at my wife and I said, I love you, but I want to fundamentally transform you, how well do you think she would take that? Probably not very well at all, right? Because then you don't actually love her for who she is. And so that's when I started getting worried. Uh, we have three kids and one on the way in March, and I thought, uh, I need to get involved, and I need to get active because I don't want to leave a, a bad legacy and heritage for my kids and be the first generation that didn't do something better for the next generation that came after them. So I ran in 2010, uh, started looking at Congress through prayer and counsel, settled on a state house run, lost, uh, then ran again in 2012 and won. So uh, myself and Scott Turner, who's holding Josh Douglas Scott, baby. give a shout out out there. There's Scott Turner back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hold up, guy. Yeah. Yeah, we, we both just finished our first session in the State House, and uh, I don't know how long I'll be there, whatever else the Lord has for me, but being able to stand on the uh, House floor and vote in favor of life right. to protect the innocent life is probably going to be one of the things that I cherish the most, if not the most, in my entire legislative career. And uh, actually, Kristen's group <laughs> came down to Texas to help us with that effort, and they were kicked out of what is it, the YMCA. Once the YMCA found out that this was a group of pro-life activists, they kicked them out, wouldn't let them take showers, wouldn't let them be there. And so it was pretty incredible, the persecution that they have, and I'm sure that goes on all over the country. But it was, it was a deep battle in Texas this year on the pro-life issue, and I was honored to get to stand on the front lines of that. And, and uh, then in our, uh, my other day job is, uh, as Josh said, the executive director of the Patriot Academy. And we take 16 to 25 year olds through a, a rigorous process of political training. We kind of like to think of it as the Navy SEALs of political training. And uh, we have the camp, we'll have academies this summer in Florida, Delaware, Idaho, Arizona, and then our flagship is in Texas. And I'd love for any of you who are age 16 to 25 interested in going into politics or any area uh, to come get our training. We teach you communications uh, training, media training, teach you about Christian worldview, how to take everything, every piece of legislation to issue through a Christian worldview and lens. And so I think it really prepares you for whatever God would have you to do. So if you're interested, I'd love for you to go to patriotacademy.com. My email is just matt at patriotacademy.com. Email me with any questions. But uh, not only am I passionate about doing the things I need to do now, uh, to instill and uh, preserve our values, but hopefully training up the next generation to do the same. It happened to me in Texas as well uh, for that pro-life rally when we were standing out there with thousands of people and over the, uh, the voices of those chanting Hail Satan and other, other things, I, I could not believe the audacity of a woman that says, you know what, it should be a mother's choice to say that if a baby is five months in the mother's womb, you know, I think she should still be able to decide whether or not that's a life. I, I think, you know, she should be able to just choose whether she wants to murder her child or not. I could not believe the audacity of these people. And they just stand out in massive numbers in the city of Austin, Texas, and come out there. How, how was that for you, being a, a first time down there and seeing all that and being in that movement? Did you really, I mean, I guess you knew at that point that God had really placed you there for a specific reason. Tell us more about that. Yeah, it, you're right. I mean, Esther, for such a time as this, just kept coming back to us over and over and again. Scott and I were able to come in with a class of about, I would say, 15 to 18 solid conservative Christian uh, leaders in the Texas House, and uh, we all banded together the entire session. And so it was neat as we went through that process. I mean, we had hundreds of DPS officers there lining the walls. We had to be escorted to and from our offices. There were death threats to some of my colleagues. So it was, it was pretty incredible, but there was a sense of calm and a sense of peace and serene because you knew you were doing exactly what you're supposed to do. 
And uh, David Jeremiah, I don't know if you know him, he's a pastor out in San Diego. He always said, uh, God's man in the center of God's will is invincible until he's done with them. And uh, I believe that's true. And so there was a really sense of peace and calm with that. And uh, we have to keep waging that battle for the preborn because I can't think of another issue that is any more important. The good news is the millennial generation is very much on board with the pro-life issue. Unfortunately, they're very not on board with the preservation of traditional marriage. So it's going to take some work uh, and education to do that. And that's why I'm glad Eric and others at Manhattan Declaration continue to keep up that and marry those two together. Um, but it, it was just an honor to be down there and uh, vote for life and be a voice for the voiceless and be able to do that. Yeah. Matt? I'll be quick. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard the story of John Peter Muhlenberg, a pastor in uh, American Revolution. And uh, at the time, colonies were getting ready for revolution. He was preaching one day, and uh, he was preaching on Ecclesiastes 3. There's a time for this, a time for that, a time for this, a time for that, a time for war, and a time for peace. And then he said, and now is the time for fighting. And he ripped open his clergy robes, had a full militia uniform, walked straight down the middle of the, his church out onto the battlefield. Right. And that's impressive. But what was even more impressive is that 300 of his parishioners followed after him. Right, right. And so I think what we have to understand is, like Eric said, we're not all going to be the generals. He became to be in the American Revolutionary War. But we can follow those who are already doing those things and have our own sphere of influence right where we are. And it's critically important because we say we have the greatest country on earth. We have the greatest constitution. It doesn't really matter. In the 1600s, the Carolinas were looking to draft our constitution. So they brought John Locke over. And they said, help us draft our constitution. He did that. It turned out to be a voluminous document. William Penn, who was starting his own colony, looked at that. And he said, I don't think that's the right approach. They said, why not? And William Penn said, governments like clocks go from the motion men give them. Wherefore, governments are instituted for men, not men for governments. If men be good, government cannot be bad. But if men are bad, government will never be good. We can have the greatest constitution in the world. If we don't have the right men and women <coughs> applying that constitution, venerating that constitution, it doesn't mean anything. And one reason, again, I would implore you to look at patriotacademy.com. We're seeking to train the next generation of leaders to be on that battlefield to protect those values that we hold most dear. Undercurrent under the surface makes the mainstream get so nervous. It's time for purpose. The news to serve us, not with propaganda they use to hurt.